My name is Jide Edu. I'm the first author, and I'm a PhD student at King's College London. Uh, smart personal voice assistants have become a very popular system, mostly due to their interactive technology. This allows users to easily interface with network appliances as well as to consume all kinds of online services using natural languages. Over 100 million users now utilize SPA like Alexa, Siri, Google Assistant, and Cortana every day, and SPA devices have been sold in massive number. They are used to consume all kinds of online services and manage all their home devices, bringing the smart home into one verbally controlled system. XPA incorporates voice driven applications, generally developed by third parties, referred to as skills in Amazon Alexa and action in Google Assistant. Like in mobile apps, skills play an essential role in extending the SPA capability by offering a wide range of services, and third party developers implement them, as I said earlier. Unlike mobile apps, skills do not run on any user control devices. Instead, skills run in the cloud or in the server controlled by the developer. The number of skills have multiplied in recent years. For instance, the Amazon Alexa skill ecosystem has grown from just 135 skills in early 2016 to over 100,000 skills by late 2020. Along with the growth in the number of skills, there is an increasing concern over the risks that third party skills pose to user privacy. Skills widen the attack surface of this assistant as malicious skills may develop potential harmful software that could affect the security and privacy of the users. Skills request for permission to assess users' data and their interaction with the users may also reveal private data, all of which can have privacy implications. Recent studies have looked at various issues in third party skills, including publishing potentially harmful skills, performing unjustified data collection, Conversely, eyes dropping conversations and performing squatting attack. However, it is unclear to what extent current attack permeate through the market. There are a huge number of skills which can make it difficult for SPA operators to vent the market. The issue prompts us with the following open question How effective are SPA market operators in protecting the user? One key feature that needs to be considered when answering this question is the strong dependency SPA holds with the cloud. Skills are hosted on remote web services controlled by the skill developer. This makes it easy for developers to modify the skill functionality even after the skills have been published. For this our analysis, we focus on the following sub-questions. As the overall state of affairs regarding data practices in third-party skill ecosystem improve over time, is the collection of personal information explained better nowadays and what influence changes over time and how and has there been any improvement in the review and certification process by the SPA uh, providers? <laughs> to answer these questions, we develop a methodology to perform a data practices measurement, which offer an independent assessment of the skill marketplaces. Amazon operates separate online marketplaces that cater to a variety of segments. The United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, France are among the LM marketplaces with third party skill services. We build a web scraper to collect data from the 11 marketplaces at different points in time. With the data collected, we first characterize the market, then analyze the skills statistically. Namely, we perform traceability analysis, we perform a dynamic interrogative analysis, and also we perform a differential analysis to highlight changes over time. All in all, we collected three snapshots of all the market segments, one in May 2019, one in July 2020, and the last one in April 2021. Unlike other platforms like Android, Amazon Alexa skills run in the cloud and the code is not publicly available. We characterize every skills using the attribute we scrape from the skill website. This attribute include the invocation of transies, the privacy policy, the skill names, the skill description, the course rating, among others. For the traceability analysis, there is need for a one-to-one -one mapping between the data actions specified in the script privacy policy and the related data operation obvious to users to better create privacy awareness. We perform traceability analysis by looking at the privacy um, policy to understand how developer discloses and justify the data practices and also the permission they request. We conduct the traceability analysis by comparing the permission requested by the skills, uh, by the skills through Amazon Alexa API and the data practices covered in the privacy policy where the traceability can be broken, partial, or complete, depending on how well the data operation and their relationship to the data action is disclosed. For instance, 
A skill offer complete traceability if it provides adequate information in a privacy policy document about its data practices. That is, the data action defined in the privacy policy document can be completely mapped to the access data permissions. Likewise, a skill offer partial traceability if not all its data permissions are covered in the privacy policy document. And also, a skill has broken traceability if it has no data implications in a privacy policy document or it has no privacy policy document at all. Due to the huge number of skills, we leverage Scribbet proposed in one of our previous works that is based on machine learning and natural language processing and support automating this analysis at scale. Scribbet implementation is based on the English speaking market privacy policy. Thus, we focus only on the five English speaking markets, which is the US, the UK, India, Australia, and Canada, which represent more than 80% of the skills in this ecosystem. We likewise dynamically interact with the skills by systematically engaging in a synthetic conversation using a suite of grammar-based approach following the method described in the Skill Explorer paper. The tool comprises a range of components designed to meaningfully interact with the skills. This include the entrances extraction, the question understanding, the answer generation, and behavioral exploration. And we were able to, our tools have 81% coverage, similarly to the coverage reported in the Skill Explorer paper. We finally study how a skill change by computing a differential representation of the skills at two point in time, exploring if there is a changes in the permission traceability, the personal information requested by this case via um, an interrogative analysis across the years. In this study, we observed that the English speaking marketplaces have the highest number of skills. In particular, the US has 68,000 skills in 2021 compared to 51,000 in 2019. Overall, the five English speaking market, which is the US, UK, India, Australia, and Canada, represent more than 80% of the entire skills in this ecosystem. The rest of this talk is structured as follows. I'll be talking about our findings in 2019 and 2020. I will talk about the responsible disclosure we did, the findings in 2020, and what factors actually impact the traceability. Looking at how developer discloses their data practices in 2019 and 2020, we find out that developers disclosed um, practices in 2019 was bad and um, 2020 was even worse. For instance, in 2020, 40% of developers with skills that ask for permissions that um, were expected to be disclosed in the privacy policy shows complete traceability. This implies that these skills have statement in their privacy policy clearly stating and justify their requested permission. This is lower than 54% we see in 2019. Similarly, we see 51% of the developer with broken traceability in 2020 compared to 35% in 2019. At the end of 2020, we made a responsible disclosure starting from mid-August 2020 by reporting scales with issues to Amazon and respective third-party developers. Amazon have confirmed that the skill stores team have taken action. So um, in 2021, we tried to measure the effect of the responsible disclosure we did. We see that out of 246 skills with broken traceability reported to Amazon, 45% no longer pose a threat to user. 18% of these skills have their, uh, has been removed from the skill market, and 10% um, have their permission completely removed. However, 17% of them now have complete traceability. Overall, we see 356 out of the 675 reported skills no longer threatening the user. Despite the responsible disclosure we did, we still see a lot of skills with broken traceability. For instance, in 2021, we see 29% of the developers with broken traceability. This result shows that traceability has improved over time. However, there are still um, a number of skills that are still broken, even after a year of reporting um, this issue to Amazon and um, respected developers. We also try to exploit several hypotheses on what could influence the changes we see over time. In particular, we analyze the impact of new skills on the ecosystem, how existing skills traceability has changed over time, and the effect of changes in permission. We see that there are 999 new skills added between 2019 and 2020 that ask for permissions that were around privacy policy. Similarly, there are 399 new skills added between 2020 and 2021 that ask for permissions that uh, Amazon expect um, developers to disclose um, their collections to the users. 
we investigate the effect of new skills on traceability, where we see that more skills with complete traceability have been added over time, which is a good thing. However, we see that skills with broken traceability are also being added. For instance, we see 26 skills with broken traceability being added between 2020 and 2021. The key, uh, key takeaway here is that there is an improvement in skills traceability over time. However, many newly added skills still exhibit broken traceability, which suggests that there is need, um, there is room to um, for improvement about this on the skill review process. Likewise, we look at how development traceability has changed across existing skills. We see that out of 302 broken skills in 2019, 65% were still broken in 2020. 29.8% skills have been removed. Less than 1% have partial traceability and 2% have complete traceability in 2020. Likewise, out of 659 skills in 2020 with broken traceability, 320 are still broken in 2021. We also see 80 skills with complete traceability in 2019, now having broken traceability in 2020, and five in 2020 having, uh, now having broken traceability in 2021. A possible explanation for this might be that developer no longer maintain this case. This could also be one of the reasons why skills remain broken over the years. We implement Skill Explorer to automatically interact with the skills because its original implementation is not possible, uh, publicly available. We interacted with 35,000 skills in the US market, excluding skills without unique invocation names, as Skill Explorer cannot undo this. We find out that 65 skills are requesting for personal information via conversation. We then examine the traceability analysis of these 65 skills found in 2021. The result shows that 57% of these skills have broken traceability. That is, they don't have a data implication in the privacy policy, or they don't even have a privacy policy at all to explain how this data we, uh, is going to be used or justified. So uh, interestingly, most of the conversion, uh, conversational skills we see do not request for um, permissions via the Alexa API. Likewise, we see an increase in the number of permissions per skills and how it negatively uh, impacts the traceability. The number of skills with privacy issues increased by 100% to six in 2020 after the skills requested more permission. A similar trail can be seen between 2020 and 2021, where the number of skills with insufficient privacy disclosures increasing by 100%. From our findings, it is important to know that traceability is not the only metrics that pose a risk to the users in this ecosystem. In fact, a skills with complete traceability can pose a risk to the user. We see that over time, skills are increasingly becoming more overprivileged, for instance, we identify over previous skills in 7% of 100 um, randomly selected skills we manually interacted with from the set of skills with complete traceability in 2021. Why these skills state the data they collect and justify their use? This justification may not be compelling. Hence, we suggest the research community, especially Amazon, should look beyond traceability and consider the data relevancy in the skills privacy review uh, in the skills um, review process. Also, to summarize in this paper, we have shown that Amazon skill vetting process improved over the years, though it's still not good enough. Stricter scrutiny is given to skills that collect data via Alexa API and skills that requested for data from the user via conversation lacks a privacy policy. We have shown that skills could still be overprivileged, even if they have a complete traceability. Likewise, um, we show that several factors influence the traceability between the stated and actual data practices, including change in permission and a responsible disclosure process like the one we did have a positive impact with 356 skills um, out of the 675 skills reported no longer posing a threat to the user. Thank you all for listening and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. Um, any questions from the audience? Yeah, we are lucky to have all the, yeah, please go ahead if you have any questions. So I, I have one question perhaps to, to start. Thank you for the, the presentation. Uh, my question is about the responsible disclosure that you made to, to the different developers. Uh, can you comment a bit more on that? Uh, what, what was that process like? And do you have any general recommendations that developers could follow to, to make that process better? 
Yes, uh, thank you for the question. So uh, we, we tried to, to report the list of these cases. We found that they are not at properly disclosing their data practices to, to the user. To, to we, we gave this list to, to Amazon and um, we tend to we look at um, the skill descriptions where we could find the contact details of these developers. We try to send them a message telling them this is the issue we find with your case and this is how you could go about resolving this. And we also invite them to, to our paper that, okay, you could take a look at this and you could properly read through to understand what we did. Um, to, to be honest, we can't say this is the direct way of, of, of going about um, resolving these issues because there is this follow-up um, research we are doing to actually understand why developers are doing what they are doing because by understanding the developer's perspective or meta model of the whole process, we will be able to actually recommend a better solution for them on how to go about uh, properly disclosing their data practices.